Välkomna till Kungliga vetenskapsakademin och den här presskonferensen då vi ska presentera årets Nobelpris i kemi. Welcome to the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and this press conference when we will announce this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. We will keep to our tradition and start in Swedish and then continue the presentation in English. And you are of course welcome to ask questions later on in either of these languages. Jag heter Hans Ellegren och är ständig sekreterare här vid Kungliga vetenskapsakademin. Till höger om mig sitter professor Johan Åkvist som är ordförande i Nobelkommittén för kemi. Och till vänster om mig sitter professor Olof Ramström, också ledamot av Nobelkommittén för kemi och sakkunnig inom ämnet. My name is Hans Ellegren. I'm the Secretary General of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. And to my right is Professor Johan Åkvist, Chair of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry. And to my left, Professor Olof Ramström, member of the Nobel Committee in Chemistry and one of the experts in the field. Årets pris handlar om ett funktionellt sätt att bygga molekyler. This year's prize is about an ingenious tool for building molecules. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har idag på morgonen beslutat att utdela 2022 års Nobelpris i kemi i lika delar till Caroline Bertossi, Stanford University, California, USA, Morten Meldal. Köpenhamns universitet, Danmark och till Barry Sharpless, Scripps Research, La Jolla, Kalifornien, USA. Det tilldelas priset för utveckling av klickkemi och bioortogonal kemi. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has this morning decided to award the 2022 Nobel Prize in Chemistry in equal shares to Carolyn Bertossi, Stanford University, California, USA, Morten Meldal, University of Copenhagen, Denmark, and to Barry Sharpless, Scripps Research, La Jolla, California, USA. They received the prize for the development of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry. Professor Åkvist will now give us a short summary in English of the prize. Please, Johan. Thank you. Click chemistry is uh, almost, almost like it sounds. It's all about snapping molecules together. Imagine that you could attach small chemical buckles to different types of building blocks. Then you could link these buckles together and produce molecules of greater complexity and variation. This was the basic idea behind click chemistry that uh, Barry Sharpless had about 20 years ago. The problem was to find good chemical buckles. They have to react with each other easily and specifically Morten Meldal and Barry Sharpless independently found the first perfect candidates that will easily snap together and importantly they won't snap with anything else. This click chemistry can now be used for building drug molecules, polymers, new materials and many other things. However, there are also other reasons for why one likes to snap molecules together. Imagine that you could attach a shining molecule to biomolecules in a living cell. Then you could follow them in a microscope and see where they are and how they move. This is what Caroline Bertossi did, but she had to find click reactions that were not toxic to the cells. She called this bioorthogonal chemistry. Chemical reactions that don't interfere with the normal biochemistry of life. This now allows us to attach all kinds of molecules to biological ones, which can be very, very useful. 
Besides tracking biomolecules, it can also be used for diagnostics, for delivering drug molecules to their targets, and many other applications. So this year's laureates founded the fields of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry. It has led to a revolution in how chemists think about linking molecules together and how to do it in living cells. Uh, and I'll leave the word to Professor Olof Ramström, who will give a more detailed presentation of the prize. Please, Olof. Thank you so much, Hans. Thank you, Johan. So this year's award is, as Johan just mentioned here, it's about making connections, making connections between molecules in a very straightforward selective and robust way. This year's award is also about concepts and how concepts combined with very important discoveries really push the boundaries and make enormous impact of science and of society. So let's start with the first concept. Around the turn of the mill millennium, uh, uh, Barry Sharpless presented a new concept which he called click chemistry. And by this he meant chemistry that was based on very special reactions that worked very efficiently, were very reliable, and gave very robust uh, product, products, very robust um, yields of products. By this type of chemistry, like you are here said, you would be able to essentially click together two molecular building blocks in a very efficient way, in a very predictive way, and you will get uh, a, a good amount of product in a very you know, reasonable short time. Now, such reactions are were not very common or very difficult to find. But one such reaction was just about to be discovered. And uh, very shortly after, this click chemistry concept was uh, introduced, uh, Morten Meldahl and his group in Denmark, and very shortly after, Barry Sharpless and his co-workers in, in, in the US, they found one such reaction that is really an, a remarkable. This reaction is based on an A-side functionality, as you can see to the upper left here. This is a structure which has three nitrogen atoms in a row. And the, and, and, the, and the opposite candidate here, the opposite uh, reactant, as we call it, is an alkyne, as you can see to the right. And this alkyne is a kind of structure where you have two carbon atoms that have three bonds between them, a triple bonded carbon. Now, these two reagents, these two building blocks, they are not terribly reactive by themselves. And if you mix them together, they will react very sluggishly with one another, and also, they will give, give mixtures, some very often give mixtures of products. So not very, not very good. However, what male dose group and Sharpless and co-worker found out was that if you add a little bit of copper, a little bit of copper one ions to this reaction mixture, the reaction was dramatically accelerated. And also, it only gave one single product. And the product is this ring-shaped, five-member ring-shaped product called a triazole. And again, this product is also quite unreactive product, quite stable product. And it also has other interesting features that could be of interest. So in a sense, as we can see here, this particular reaction fulfilled the criteria of click chemistry. And now you had a tool where you can easily click together molecules in a very effective way. Immediately upon discovery of this reaction, it, it, uh, and this reaction is called, as you, call, as you can see down here, the copper catalyzed acyl alkyne cycle addition reaction. Immediately upon its discovery, it gained enormous interest across, uh, across uh, chemistry and related fields and immediately spread uh, across all fields. And uh, now, with this reaction, it was now uh, an essentially 
although other reactions have been so say, uh, identified and discovered after this one, this particular reaction has almost become synonymous with the click chemistry concept and is also often called the click reaction. And, and uh, um, you can say that it's still the crown jewel of click reactions. And with this reaction, it's now possible to build together relatively complex structures as the one you can see here, where you can click together multiple components, multiple building blocks, click them together in sequence or in parallel, giving rise to, in this case, a star-shaped complex molecule, dendrimer-type-like molecule. Now, one of the areas where people wanted to apply this reaction was in biology or biology biochemistry related area. But for this reason, uh, in these cases, when you work with living cells, copper is not ideal, and living cells don't really like too much copper. So for this reason, alternative reactions were sought after. And that brings us to the second concept. Around the same time, as the click chemistry concept and this copper catalyzed click reactions were introduced, Caroline Bertosi uh, formulated a concept which she called bioorthogonal chemistry. And by this, she meant chemistry that is based on special reactions that can be, that can be performed in living systems, in living cells, in living organisms, without affecting or being affected by the myriad of substances and reactions that occur in such very complex systems. As you can imagine, this is definitely not an easy task. So during the 1990s, uh, Caroline Bertosi had been trying to work out the chemistry and biology of complex carbohydrate structures, complex sugar, complex sugar structures that are called glycans, and they are often located at the surface of cells, as you can see in this picture. Um, they have been, Bertosi and her group have been uh, identifying chemistry, chemical reactions that could work in living systems, in living cells. For example, they had identified a way to introduce the acyl functionality in living cells and living systems. And they could do so by a type of metabolic engineering approach where you have a, a sugar structure, a carbohydrate structure, which is then functionalized with an acyl moiety. And when you grow cells in the presence of this structure, this can be taken up by the cells. It can go through and be processed by the cell machinery and finally become incorporated, incorporated in, in the glycans that you find at the cell circles, as you can see. Now, in, uh, once this fantastic copper-catalyzed click reaction had been discovered. Shortly after, Batosi could also identify a metal-free alternative. And you can see the alternative here. And this alternative was based on a so-called strained alkyne. As you can see, this is an eight-membered octagonal alkyne where the alkyne's moiety is actually twisted in the sense that it becomes much more reactive. And this alkyne structure, you can then, of course, functionalize any way you want. In this case, for example, with a, a molecule that can emit green light. And if you then add this strained alkyne to the cells where you have this acyl functionality, these two components can click together, click together uh, very efficiently. And now you have labeled uh, the, the glycans at the surface of the cell and you can study where they are under the microscope. And that's exactly what you can see on the next slide here. Here you see a, a number of cells, and the blue part here is the cell nuclei that have been labeled blue. And you can see the green, uh, uh, shining green uh, surface of the cells where you actually have those glycan structures. Um, so, these two concepts and the, the many reactions, the reactions that have been so say, discovered 
they have really had an enormous impact on science. And, have, uh, and there's many, many widely applied across all disciplines of chemistry and related sciences, neighboring sciences. Click chemistry, if you take click chemistry, has been applied almost everywhere you need to very quickly connect two building blocks. For example, just to give you a few examples, it's been applied to pharmaceutical development, it's been applied to conjugation of various biomolecules, such as, for example, in DNA sequencing. It's also been applied, very much applied in material sciences, where people have been building very advanced and functional materials using this method. When it comes to the bioorthogonal reactions, these have been uh, heavily used to explore how biomolecules uh, the fates and the, uh, the roles of the biomolecules in cells and in organisms. They have been used to study disease and deciphering disease processes. And, of course, that can then lead to the development of new drugs. And in a little movie you can see here to the, the bottom left here, we have one such example where you can see a bacterial cell. You can see the cell envelope is, is marked in green. And inside this bacterial cell, one of the proteins have been has been labeled using this, kind of using this kind of chemistry. And now you can follow it in real time within inside the cell. So clearly, these very important uh, uh, accomplishments and these really fantastic uh, discoveries from our three laureates have really made an enormous impact on chemistry and on science in general. And for that, it's really been to the greatest benefit of you. This, this is, is the, the primary audio, audio circuit, circuit for the Reuters, Reuters Live Service. service. This, this is, is the all of you. I'm absolutely stunned. I'm, I'm sitting here. I can hardly breathe. <laughs> I understand. It's the middle of the night for you. Um, uh, was it a shock uh, to obtain this call in the middle of the night? Yes, it w that's an understatement. <laughs> I'm still uh, not entirely positive that it's real, but it's getting realer by the minute. Yeah, it will probably be, be a long night for you to, today, I, I guess. Um, um, we shall see if we have some um, questions here. Uh, I'm sitting in the session hall of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, and we have uh, many interested journalists here, um, both from the international press as well as from Swedish press. Are you ready to take some questions? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay. SVT. Good morning. Uh, congratulations. This is Swedish television. Public Service, Thomas von Heine. Um, we heard something about applications from your work. Could you say something? Could you add something to that? What, in, in your mind, the most interesting applications? Absolutely. Um, you know, to my mind, the, the two types of applications that I think are um, really making a lot of impact are First of all, the use of bioorthogonal chemistry as a biological discovery tool to discover new kinds of biomolecules that we didn't even know existed because we have a new way to look at them. And then the other important uh, area of impact is in medicine and in particular for drug delivery, which is doing chemistry inside human patients to make sure that drugs go to the right place and stay away from the wrong place. Okay, I think first we had a question here somewhere. 
Congratulations. I'm Amelie Megner Arn, uh, Swedish TV4. I wonder if your click technique was involved um, when we were developing the antibody test of COVID-19. That's a great question. Um, you know, we did some research in my lab around not so much diagnostic tests, but development of potential therapeutics to treat acute COVID-19. And we did use click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry in putting together some drug prototypes. Okay, a question in the back there. David Keaton from the Associated Press. Um, first of all, when we look at click chemistry today in 2022, what are the areas of new developments that you're the most excited about, the new, uh, the new discoveries? And if you could maybe explain in layman's terms what this really means to, uh, to chemistry. Thank you for a great question. Um, I think the field of bioorthogonal and click chemistry is still... I think in its early phases, you know, we have a handful of incredible reactions like the ones that Professors Sharpless and Meldahl developed, um, but it's really just a handful, and I think there's probably many new reactions to be discovered and invented. So that's an important frontier, is inventing new chemistry. And then in terms of applications, um, again, I think applications in the biotech industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and the development of new ways of treating diseases and diagnosing diseases, I think that these are areas that will be very strongly impacted by click chemistry, as they already have been. Okay, question here, please. Congratulations, Professor. Um, uh, click chemistry is a very effective and useful method for building molecules. So my question is, is it easy to scale up the reaction? Yes. Um, in fact, I think that's one of the most elegant features of quick chemistry reactions is the fact that they're, they're so simple and they're so highly selective that the yields tend to be very high with very little impurities and that makes them very nicely scalable. And in fact, Click chemistry reactions are already being performed at manufacturing scales in the pharmaceutical industry. Okay, we have time for more questions. Oh. Thank you. Phil, <clears throat> pardon me. Philip O'Connor, the Reuters News Agency. Congratulations, Professor. Uh, I'd like to ask you, was there a specific question that you were seeking an answer to when you set off down this path? And did you find the answer, or did you get answers to different questions in your research? Uh, this is a great question, and, and the answer is yes and yes. And just to give you a little bit more detail, um, what set us down the path of developing bioorthogonal chemistry was an interest in being able to visualize molecules on cells that no one had been able to see before. And those molecules for us were the, the glycans. And once we figured out how to visualize the glycans using those chemistries, we learned all kinds of interesting things about the functions of glycans that coat the surfaces of cells. And what we learned led to the development of a new idea for cancer immune therapy, um, and at the same time also led to the discovery of a new kind of biomolecule called glycoRNA that had never been seen before. Does that answer your question? Okay, one more question here. Associated Press. Obviously, this prize comes with uh, an incredible notoriety and also a prize money. Uh, what do you think this notoriety will bring and this prestige will bring to uh, this area of science, uh, to yourself? Uh, and then, obviously, what are you hoping to do with this, uh, the prize money that comes with this? Um, I can answer your questions in reverse order. Um, I haven't had enough time to think about the prize money, uh, so I don't know yet. Um, but then to your earlier questions, um, 
you know, I think that the attention that a, a prize like the Nobel Prize brings um, can be incredibly energizing for a scientific field. And I've been very fortunate to work at the interface of chemistry and biology. It's such a rich interface with so much great technology development and fundamental basic science discoveries. Um, and so to the extent that the prize casts a light on chemical biology, I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, I think the other um, incredible benefit is um, that it's an opportunity for me to recognize all the work that so many trainees from my lab have done over the last 25 years. Um, and I've been very blessed with an incredible team of graduate students and postdoctoral fellows and undergraduates and staff. Um, and it's, it's an opportunity for me to reflect on how fortunate I have been and to share in the celebration with them. This seems to be the last question from the press for you, Professor Bartosi. Um, thank you, uh, and uh, once again, our warmest congratulations for receiving the 2022 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Uh, we look forward to see you here then in Stockholm in December then. Myself as well, and thank you so much. Goodbye, goodbye. Uh, let's move on to see if there are some questions here to the committee about the research or the prize. We have one more here directly. Uh, yes, uh, a question about uh, the comparison between last year's prize and this year's prize. Um, both dealt with new ways of building molecules. Is, is, is that correct? Can we say that there are, there's a, there are uh, bridges between these two prizes, or is that not the case? Would you like to? Well, they are uh, separate areas, of course, but um, uh, you're perfectly right in that it's, uh, it has this ingredient of different new ways of building molecules. Although last year's prize was maybe more a pure organic chemistry prize, as you have heard, uh, this year's prize uh, spans very big uh, application areas in chemistry. So, um, but it, it's about building molecules and attaching molecules to each other. More, yeah, please. This is Duncan from Nordic Chinese Times. Um, again, one question is, uh, uh, is click chemistry a good method for conducting framework materials, like morph, metal, organic frameworks? Hold on. Well, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, and actually, I think it has been applied to that particular field as well. So you can introduce either the A-side or the alkyne group, if you use that reaction, in this metal, this organic framework that you're referring to. And then you can just click on the other you know, reactant, and then you have a way to functionalize these frameworks very easily and straightforwardly. So yes, it has been used like that. Are there any more questions? Uh, if not, uh, we say thank you for your interest. Uh, we hope to see you back here in the Academy uh, on Monday when we will present uh, this year's Sveriges Riksbanks uh, Prize in Economic Science in memory of Alfred Nobel. Thank you. <laughs>